want to talk a little more in detail about artificial intelligence and machine learning. People ask what actually constitutes artificial intelligence, as opposed to, for example, just good analytics. Right? A lot of this is just great analytics. It's just good software development. So what constitutes actually artificial intelligence? Well, number one, people, you need to have some sort of human level comprehension. Right? And number two, this is the more important piece, the platform has to have an ability to learn. Right? So let's talk about the, some of the things that are turning the corner. And one of the big ones is natural language processing. Let's just look back at the history. Right? So we've got in, 19, in 2011, that's when Apple introduced Siri for the first time. Right? And then the year after that, that's when Google introduced Google Now. It took Microsoft a couple of years to catch up uh, with Cortana, which they have today. And then, of course, in 2015, that's when Amazon Alexa was introduced. And, of course, today we've got Google Home as well. But in, in the next three to five years, this is going to be absolutely ubiquitous. So where is the big use case? Always ask yourself, where is the biggest financial incentive to exploit the technology? And the biggest financial incentive is the call centers. Imagine the incentive to be able to do that through automation, through a computer, where you can split test and optimize conversations and monitor everything with consistent protocol delivery. Right? In this country, we have three million call center operators. Those jobs will be affected. Right? In the next two, three, four years, it's gonna, we're going to start to see a dramatic acceleration. Let's look at some others. Right? We've got Facial recognition. Apple's got this on their phones right now. Right? That's a big deal. We're seeing implications in the security space. This is a, a mock-up of a security checkpoint in an airport in the future, replacing the TSA setups that we see today. Right? And in fact, airports are, a, are an early innovator, as are hotels and casinos. Right? The big ones are airports. You've got hotels, casinos, shopping malls. Looking at the facilities we interact with, including this hotel, we can see the technologies that they're using here, knowing that those same technologies will come down into smaller and smaller businesses and eventually into our individual homes. And we can see the future. But of course, facial recognition is just one piece of a much broader technology, which is object and image recognition in general. And that's finding incredible use cases, including looking for defects, in advanced manufacturing plants, really fascinating. Believe it or not, the technology has been used to count people in large demonstrations. And of course, it plays a critical role in the autonomous vehicles. Tesla introduced their autopilot in 2015. That's when they introduced that. And then the next year was when the Alibus, which is running uh, on um, IBM's Watson. This is an autonomous bus, which is operating in a neighborhood in London. Uh, what are they looking for? They're looking for data. They want data, right? They need data. That's how they learn. That's how they get better is to see it in real life situations and calibrate and make improvements along the way. Why did Facebook pay $19 billion for WhatsApp? They wanted the data, right? So this was a proof of concept that was run not this past summer, but the summer before by Auto, which was uh, owned by uh, Uber. The truck went 125 miles down the freeway to Colorado Springs. There was a guy in the cab, but he wasn't driving. In Europe, same time frame, they ran these three trucks across all of continental Europe. Eight countries they drove autonomously across the whole thing. That means you don't have to replace the entire fleet to replace the entire functionality. That's why it's accelerating. That's why it's so powerful. Right? We truly are in an exponential environment. And it's having effects in the job markets. There's a study that came out from Oxford University a couple of years ago that suggested that 47% of the jobs here in the United States are at risk of being replaced in the next 15 years. And 47%, as high as that is, and as scary as that proposition is, was actually a lower number than some of the other countries, developing countries around the world, including China at 77% and India at 69%. There's basically just two types of jobs out there. There's manual jobs and there's cognitive jobs. Right? And in each one of those two buckets, you've got repetitive tasks and you've got non-repetitive tasks. And so it makes sense that over a period of time, the manual repetitive jobs are going to get replaced by robotics at some point. We don't know when, but that's likely to happen. Right? And it's likely that the repetitive cognitive jobs are going to get replaced by algorithms at some point down the road. 
The point is, it's easier to find something if you know what you're looking for. Right? If you know these things are coming, it's a lot easier to find those solutions because your mind is tuned to that. Right? And then, of course, in the non-repetitive space, you have agile humans, you have creative humans. But according to that study from Oxford, they're suggesting that 47% of jobs in the United States are essentially based on repetitive tasks. So fascinating. Think about your organization. Think about your own job. So these are all disruptive innovations. Disruptive innovation invalidates existing business markets.